Bibliophiles of the internet, my name is Adriana and today I'm here to give you the play-by-play -play of the books I read in October. So the theme for this blessed month was Ominous October, which I totally stole slash borrowed from my good friend Penelope from Penelope's Picks, who does this theme pretty much every year. But I just wanted to read some dark, creepy, magical things, so I hope she will forgive me that. Anyways, let's just get started. The first book I read in October was Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova. This is Own Voices Queer Latinx Fiction. It's about a girl named Alex whose entire family is made up of brujos and brujas. They're all anxiously awaiting her death day and for her to come into her powers, but she's always seen her abilities as more of a burden, so she decides to try this canto that will get rid of her powers altogether. This is a really tough book for me to talk about because of the essence of the story and the background of the story and the culture of all the characters involved, I had a lot personally invested in this book before it even began. And I really, really wanted to love it, but that just didn't happen. What I do like is how the author used all of these complex cultural beliefs and belief systems to create this really rich and unique fantasy world that felt very steeped in purpose. And I love that there's this huge cast of characters who are predominantly Latinx because the story is a true celebration of Latinx power, both metaphorically and literally, and I love that the story also celebrates Latinx connectivity. The metaphor of the story itself is brilliant. I love how when Alex tries to rid herself of something fundamental, she actually ends up losing her roots, her history, her family, and as a piece of Latinx fiction, that is powerful stuff. What ended up really killing this story for me was the writing style, the voice, the structure, the lack of character development, all these little craft issues that I couldn't ignore. I just felt like the writing style really wasn't up to par with the level of the concept. It had some really incredible moments, but overall I think it was much too dependent on really bad cliches and tired tropes and all of these recycled ideas we see again and again in YA. And I just can't bring myself to love something that is made up of only moments. I need it to be consistent. And I also have some problems with how bisexuality was portrayed in this story because it's shown through this over-the-top love triangle that emphasizes that eventually Alex will have to make a choice. And I just feel like the most effective way to frame bisexuality is not necessarily as this huge choice. So despite having some really strong qualities, ultimately I found this book to be rather disappointing and underwhelming and that's why I eventually settled on three stars. Then, on a much better note, I finally read The Curiosity House, The Shrunken Head by Lauren Oliver and H.C. Chester. This is a really great middle grade mystery story about a group of four friends who all have incredible abilities and they all live and perform at Dumfries Dime Museum. But when the owner brings in a shrunken head for a new exhibit, people start dying mysteriously and the kids decide to take things into their own hands before the curse can strike again. First of all, this story is very well written, it's funny, it's darkly charming, it's witty, it's a really fun and engaging mystery adventure story, but when it has to be, it's also very beautifully melancholic. So I really feel like the story explores a broad range of emotions and really hits all the right notes. And what I really love is that the story focuses on found family because all of these characters are orphans and so they face a lot of adversity and criticism when it comes to how they were raised and the things they can do. They're often scared to show their true selves or to even use their abilities outside of the museum, so I love that as a family and as a unit they create this safe, accepting space for one another where they can just be their true selves. It's just a really empowering story because you have a group of kids who have been labeled as freaks, as inhuman, as abnormal by society, but when they're able to get together and just do what they do best, they're able to accomplish extraordinary things. This is a truly unique and fun story with so much heart, and that's why I gave it four stars. After that, I finally read Remembrance by Meg Cavett. This is the seventh and newest installment in the Mediator series, and that's why I can't say much about the synopsis. Meg Cabot has now written two adult continuations of two of her most popular YA series, and what I really love about both of these books is that the voice and the essential essence of both of these characters, Mia and Suze, has stayed consistent. They're older, they're at different places in their lives, they have different perspectives and responsibilities, but fundamentally they remain the same people. They have the same problems, the same quirks, the same tics. And what I love the most is that even though they're adults, that doesn't mean they know what they're doing. That's something I can really appreciate because that helps dispel the myth that adulthood brings with it all this wisdom and collectedness because, spoiler alert, it doesn't. 
And along the same lines, yeah, Sue still does annoy me a lot and she makes a lot of really dumb decisions, but at the same time, I recognize that if she didn't make such stupid decisions, there would be no book, there would be no series. Like, books are not written about flawless people whose lives and choices are always 100% perfect. And of course, Meg Cabot's style is extremely distinctive. She has a very sharp voice, it's unfiltered, it's highly entertaining, and the story is really fast-paced. So for those reasons, I gave this book three and a half stars. And the last book I finished in October was The Dead House by Don Kurtajik. This is a really dark, creepy YA story about two girls named Carly and Caitlin. They're basically two souls residing in one body, and Carly comes out during the day, and Caitlin comes out during the night. Carly's therapist believes this to be a case of dissociative identity disorder that Carly is using to cope with some past trauma, and the more she is treated in that respect, the more dangerous it becomes for both girls. And the story begins with an awful incident at Carly and Caitlin's school that's believed to have been caused by a mental break between Carly and Caitlin. So the story is told through a series of case files, journal entries, and found footage clips as well. I would be lying if I said this book didn't creep me the hell out. It definitely made me feel squeamish about the dark and it made me think twice about stepping into a pitch black hallway at night. The format is also something that really drew me in because it felt like I was discovering the story as it was being told, but also like I was being pulled towards an inevitable ending at the same time, which is a really interesting effect. And I thought that was an unusually impartial way to tell a story. Like usually you have a narrator and they have certain biases or beliefs, but this was more like we've collected the facts and now we are presenting them to you so that you can make your own judgment. That's something I believe also contributed to the feeling like the facts themselves are unreliable because you don't really know who to trust. With that said, this story is definitely driven more by plot than by characters. What's happening absolutely overshadows who it's happening to, and I just felt like these characters weren't developed enough. There are way too many narrative threads for one story, and the more the book progresses, the more it feels like a really bad, cheesy, scary movie for adolescents, so that's also something I did not enjoy. But overall, I'm glad I read this book. It definitely scared me, it kept me thinking, but do I think it's incredible? Can I see myself returning to it? Would I recommend it? No, so that's why I gave it three stars. And really quickly, I just want to say that in October, I started The Lives of Christopher Chant by Diana Wynne Jones. Now, I can't discuss this one yet because I'm still in the middle of it, but I can say with certainty that so far, it's excellent. So those are all the books I read in October. If you feel so inclined, please feel free to share what was your favorite book that you read in October in the comments below. But that is everything I had for this wrap up today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the flip side of the page.